Welcome to the Pinpoint 3 Diagnostic class. Today we're going to learn all about how the Pinpoint 3 does pressure control on your machine. In order to do that, we're going to have to have a few simple components to follow along with the training. One of those is a rate controller with the envelope already pulled up on it. The other one is the operator's manual so we can access drawings and schematics and wire pinouts. Another one is a breakout harness so that we can tie into either the components on the machine or we can tie in at the gateway hub and have a have an access point to measure the signals and of course if we're measuring signals we're going to have to have a voltmeter in order to tie into that breakout harness and make sure that we can see the signals so the first thing that we need to do is identify all the components that are involved in the pressure control circuit so the very first one and most obvious is probably our gateway hub so our gateway hub both drives whatever's controlling the pressure on your machine and it receives signals from the pressure sensor to know if it's driving it correctly. So the, the, the gateway hub can drive a couple different types of components to control the flow or the pressure. One of those is an electric regulating valve which we call an inline or a bypass servo valve. So that's just a motorized valve that opens and closes a butterfly in order to allow more or less flow through. The second method that the pinpoint can use to control the flow and or the pressure is a PWM style drive pump. And a PWM style drive pump increases and decreases the RPMs of the pump to allow more or less flow to come through, which changes your boom pressure. And of course, if we're gonna be driving a flow regulating device like a regulating valve or a PWM cartridge, we're going to need some feedback to know whether we're driving it to the right point or not. And that is a very simple device called a pressure sensor. So now that we've identified the components, gateway hub, flow regulating device, and our pressure sensor, we're ready to start figuring out where those signals come out of the hub and how we can test them. To start diagnostics on the pressure, the first thing that we're going to have to do is locate the places on the gateway hub that are involved in the pressure control. So the very first one of those is this top connector up here, which is labeled servo. The servo is going to be what goes down and ties into our pump to increase and decrease the PWM valve or to open and close a regulating valve. And the one just below that labeled pressure and flow, that's where our pressure signal, pressure sensor is going to be powered and send its signal back into. So now that we know where to go look for those, we're gonna open up the operator's manual. And when you're in the operator's manual, if you scroll down to the very bottom of it, you're gonna see a picture of the gateway hub and under it is some schematics. So on this, we have that same servo port up there at the top. And that servo port is labeled as table number one down here. So if we put a we can see that table number one has all the different pinouts um, for that servo port. So real quickly, we can get rid of a few different functions. Pins one and four don't matter, and pins three and six don't matter. If we're talking about driving the main product pump, the only ones that we're interested in are pins two and pins five, which is our servo increase and decrease. So that's going to open and close our regulating valve or that's going to increase and decrease our RPMs using a PWM drive pump. So the second thing that we need to find is where our pressure sensor signals go. So that's going to be up there in port number two, um, which is labeled as port num or uh, table number two down there, which is just below that one. And within this one, we're interested in only three pins on that one, pins four, five, and six down here, which are going to be our power, signal, and ground for that pressure sensor. So we're gonna send power and ground to the pressure sensor, and we're gonna get a signal back from it to tell us exactly what that boom pressure is, so we'll know whether to increase or decrease the flow with whatever flow regulating device that you have. Now that we know where to find the signals, we need to know where to go look in the envelope controller to set up in order to drive those signals. So when we're in the envelope controller, we're gonna come over here into this PSI menu. And from the PSI menu, you've got a couple, few different options. You can run in P1, which is target pressure one. You can run in P2, which is target pressure two. RX is not supported at this time. 
there's also a manual mode, which is where you can just use the increase and decrease arrows to manually increase and decrease your pump duty cycle or uh, open and close your electric regulating valve. So uh, down here at the bottom of this, you get a couple different things in your menu. You can see your pump PWM. So this would be the percent voltage that you're driving to your PWM uh, spoil um, at, so that you would know exactly how you're driving your pump. And then uh, in order to set that up, we would come into the wrench. Within the wrench, we would go into pressure. And in pressure, we go to pump setup. So right now, the servo type is where we would select if we had a PWM 12 volt or PWM ground, we would select what type of PWM drive we had. If we had an inline or bypass servo valve, uh, we would also select um, which one of those we had. So this is where you come and select your pump type. After we've selected our pump type, we can come in here and we can set lots of parameters on this pump. So um, just to set this up for the diagnostic, I'm just going to go 0 to 100. And I'm going to set this servo manual speed at 100. So there's uh, several different things that we can set up within this uh, in order to uh, drive our pump or our regulating valve in different ways. So all of these will impact the different voltages that we see. Uh, whenever we're actually testing what our pump is doing. So that, that's all about where we go and set up the pump for whatever pump type we have. The next part down here is the sensor setup. So um, on our most of our rigs, we have a capstan pressure sensor that we're going to use on it. And it says, what's the sensor minimum and maximum boats? And um, those are listed right on the sensor if you're ever curious. So this one says the output is 0.5 to 5 volts. So you can see that I have a 0.5 to 5 volt entered. And it says that its range is 0 to 100 PSI printed right on the sensor tag. So again, when we talk about the sensor setup, that's just literally knowing what pressure sensor do you have on the boom, going in and entering the parameters so that we know that we're seeing and measuring that pressure sensor according to its specifications. So we do all of our sensor setup in there. We do all of our pump setup within this menu. And now back on our home screen, uh, under the system menu, you have a pump on off right here. So in, in my situation, I've got the ability to turn my pump on and off here. Now in your particular machine, you may have a switch on the console. Um, you may have a switch on your joystick. Um, you, in addition to that, you can have a switch at your remote fill station. So there's many different places that you can come in and turn the pump on and off. So this pump on off switch may not be active in this menu on yours because it may be receiving it from another location. So again, knowing where to turn your pump on and off is a little bit about knowing more about which particular machine you're on. But we do want to engage the pump so that we can go through our diagnostics. Now we're gonna shift gears a little bit and talk about actually measuring the signals. So right now I've got a voltmeter uh, with a breakout harness tied directly into the hub in the six pin servo port. I've got my positive lead on pin two and I've got my negative lead on pin five. So that's my servo increase and my servo decrease and it's directly hooked into the gateway hub. And down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen you can see that I've got a little voltmeter readout. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our wrench go into pressure, pump setup. So right now we're going to be looking at a PWM 12 volt signal. It's set to go from zero to 100%, uh, 0 0% pump duty cycle to 100% pump duty cycle or a servo min max zero to 100. So when we come back out to our home screen and we come into PSI control here and I'm in manual mode right now, when I start hitting this increase arrow, you can see that my pump PWM comes up and right now it's at 2% pump PWM or we're sending 2% of the voltage to the pump is a nice way to think about it. And you can see that it does produce a very small voltage, 350 millivolts to the pump. So you'll be able to see that as we continue to increase this pump duty cycle and now we're up around 16% pump PWM, I'm now in a actual voltage instead of millivolt situation and we're around 2.3 volts. So as you hit and hold this button and continue to increase, we're at a pump PWM of 36 now and we're measuring 5 volts. And as we continue to just increase this pump PWM, 
we're going to see that that voltage steadily increases up with the pump PWM. So we're at around 76% duty cycle now, measuring around 10 and a half volts. 90% um, duty cycle, measuring 12 volts. And when we get all the way up to 100% pump PWM, you can see that we're measuring 13.7 volts. So we just saw this go from a minimum of zero volts, which is off, to a maximum of 13.7 volts, which is actually what my power supply is capable of producing, or 100% of what's available. So now with PWM pumps, we know that it's certainly not going to spin at zero volts or even with millivolts. So we're going to need some voltage stronger than that to get the pump spinning. So it doesn't make any sense to have it programmed to go all the way as low as zero. And we also know that the pump is going to run out of flow before it reaches this maximum voltage right here. So it doesn't make any sense to set it all the way to 100%. We can set it at some lower voltage. So the tighter we get this range, this pump operating range, the better performance we're going to get out of our pressure control circuit. So now if I come back in here to this wrench and I go into my pressure setup and my pump setup and I'm going to change my servo minimum to 23 and I'm going to change my servo maximum to 78. Okay, so 23 and 78 are pretty normal min and max pump settings. Um, you're going to see these in a lot of controllers. Typically, it's anywhere between 20 and 80. Uh, but th this is representative of most controllers that you're going to see on the market. So when I come over here to my home screen now, I'm going to just uh, set this back down to zero since we were all the way up at 100. And you can see that voltage just falling right down. And now when I hit the up arrow once, you can see that it didn't go to 2%. It went to my minimum pump PWM that I programmed in of 23%. So you can see if I click down once again, it goes to zero PWM. And if I click up once, it goes to that 23% or that minimum pump threshold that I set in my PWM setup. So you can see now that we're driving 3.2 volts to that PWM cartridge instead of that zero. Now, as you increase your PWM, you're going to see it behaving just the same way. You, as you increase your pump PWM, you get a steady voltage climb along the range. And if I just hit and hold this increase button now, you're going to see that it climbs all the way up and it stops at 78, which is what I programmed in as my max PWM value. And that corresponds with 10.7 volts. So if we're looking at measuring our PWM pump output at the hub. We're looking at usually three and a half to 12 volt signal, depending on where you have your min and your max servo set to. And we should see that voltage steadily increase over the range if it's outputting correctly. Now, this is an example of a harness that we may use on, um, on a uh, pump. This has a six pin plug that goes into the hub where it would be populated with pins two and five to run out to the uh, PWM pump. It has a two pin DT connector on it that would actually plug into the PWM pump and regulate the flow right there. So we could test that at the hub like I'm doing on the six pin side. We could go down and we could test that at the pump with the two pin connector if we had a breakout for that. So we can test this signal up and down the line anywhere we want to, but if we're measuring the PWM signal, it should go to a minimum percent that we have programmed in there, a maximum percent that we have programmed in there, and the voltage should scale up and down according to what we had set those parameters to. The second type of control valve that we can measure is the inline or bypass servo valve. So in order to do that, we're going to go back into our wrench. We're going to go into pressure, pump setup. We're going to change our servo type to inline and instead of PWM. So now when we come back out here to our pressure control screen, everything's going to look the same, except one of the things you're going to notice is I hit the up arrow and I let off of it and my PWM goes from zero to a hundred and then back down. So you can see it, I'm going to click it again. So it jumps up and jumps back down. So in PWM mode, we didn't see that because in PWM mode, when we hit the increase, that PWM value stayed the same. And that's because we're sending a constant voltage to that PWM cartridge to keep the pump spinning at a very specific RPM.
Well, in, a, in an electric or regulating valve like an inline or a bypass servo, the pump's running at a fixed displacement. So we're not actually changing the RPMs of the pump. What we're doing is we're opening and closing a regulating valve to let more or less flow through. So what that means is, is when I hit this increase button, it's gonna drive the valve. And as soon as I let off of it, it's gonna stop driving the valve or take the voltage away. And when we take the voltage away, the valve just sits in the same position. So what you're gonna see is if I hit and hold the increase button, you can see that as I increase with it set in inline servo, I get a positive 13.7 volts or it's now sending maximum voltage to that regulating valve to open it up as wide as possible. Now, the exact opposite occurs if I hit the decrease button. It's trying to drive the valve closed now, so it reverses the polarity of the signal. So now we see that it's sending negative 13.7 volts, or it's trying to close that valve as fast as possible. Now, you may be in a situation where you don't have an inline servo. So an inline servo would be uh, that you have your pump in line with your valve, in line with your boom. And as the valve opens up, it allows more flow to go to the boom and therefore increase the pressure. The second option is a bypass servo, which works exactly opposite of an inline servo. So the bypass servo would actually be in line to the tank so that as the bypass servo valve opens up, it sends more flow back to the tank instead of to the boom. So opening it up actually decreases the flow to the boom. So inline and bypass use the exact same type of valve. They just control the flow in exactly opposite ways. One of them acts as a restrictor between the boom. One of them acts to allow the flow to return back to the tank. So if I come over here into my wrench and I go into pressure and pump setup and I change this into bypass and I come back out here to my pressure control, you're gonna see when I hit and hold the increase, I get negative 13.7. That's because in order to increase now, it has to drive it in the opposite direction because the valve is physically plumbed opposite of an inline. And you're gonna see the same thing happens when I hit the decrease button here. Now it's opening that valve or 13.7. So inline and bypass, exactly the same. You just have to know what type of plumbing you have on there. And when you hit these arrows, exactly which way it should be driving that valve. So the other thing that you notice is, is Whenever I hit increase here, it's sending 100% of the possible voltage to that pump. Well, we may not want it to drive the valve that fast. So what we need to do is we need to come into our pressure and our pump setup. And right now I'm operating in manual mode, which is impacted by this manual speed. If you're in auto mode or your P1, P2 selection, the servo minimum and maximums are going to set the min and max voltage that it can send to that regulating motor to open and close it. But right now, I'm just gonna do a really significant change and change this down to 25% from 100. So now you're gonna see that, uh, I'm gonna hit the decrease button here since we're in bypass mode. When I hit the decrease button, it goes now my pump PWM to 25 instead of 100. So you can see, just like before, I get a much lower voltage. I get 3.5 volts. So what that means is it's driving the valve, but it's driving the valve much slower now. So we use these minimum and maximum servos and these manual mode servo speeds on an inline and bypass valve to set a minimum and maximum voltage that we want to drive that valve. So just like a PWM drive pump, we don't want to overdrive it with too much voltage we also don't want to underdrive it with a voltage that isn't strong enough to actually move the valve. So we can use these parameters to tune this valve in and make it operate exactly the way that we want to. To complete the pressure control diagnostics, we now need to measure the pressure sensors since we've measured the pump. And in order to do that, what I've done is I've now moved my breakout harness and I've put it on my pressure sensor. So there's a three pin weather pack on there. I have a three pin breakout harness that I put right directly on my pressure sensor. And in this case, I have a pressure emulator since I'm on a bench top and don't have live spray. But on a real machine, I would tee in to the actual pressure sensor and, um, or you could go into the hub just like we discussed. But 
In order to measure the signal wire off of the pressure sensor, you need to go between the ground and the signal wire on the pressure sensor. And again, um, those are listed on the schematics uh, for the hub. And there's also a schematic in there for the pressure sensor so that you can know which wires are the signal wire and the ground wire so that you can tee in and measure that signal actually at the sensor as well. So the first thing is, is just to go verify our setup. And in the pressure setup, we have our sensor set up. And as we discussed earlier, we have a 0 0.5 to 5 volt 0 to 100 PSI sensor. So if I come back to my home screen, we're measuring the voltage of this sensor. It says that I'm at 500 millivolts, which is basically half a volt. So at half a volt, we can see that our pressure readout is zero PSI. So now as you begin increasing pressure, you're gonna see that now we're up to 10 PSI in the boom. And now we have one volt coming back on the signal line. As we continue to increase and get to 20 pounds of pressure, we have a volt and a half. As we continue to increase our pressure up to 50 or 40, we have 2.3 volts. And 50, we have 2.8 volts. And 60, we have 3.3 volts. So you can see that the way that this pressure sensor signal works is it scales the voltage up as the pressure increases and that's how we interpret what the pressure is in the boom off of the pressure sensor. And this pressure sensor can go all the way up to 100 PSI. So when we get this to 100 PSI, 99 looks like 98, but 99 is as high as it'll go. And we can see that we're now at five volts. So now you can actually see what the reason that we set those parameters in there, this pressure sensor at zero PSI has 0 0.5 volts. Now we can see at 100 PSI, it has five volts. And as the pressure in the boom goes up and down, it scales the voltage up and down according to the pressure in the boom. So if we want to test our pressure sensor, we can actually just go put the pump into manual mode, get our breakout harness in between our pressure sensor, and we can go and we can increase the flow or the pressure to the boom up and down, and we can measure the voltage of the pressure sensor to make sure that it lines up and what it's reporting is actually happening on the sprayer. So that is the pressure sensor diagnostic portion.